Hi everybody, this is Sam with Python Basics and we are going to be working uh, more with for loops and we are going to then also work with um, the idea of nested for loops and the placement of print and for indentation purposes. So let's just get started. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's say we have an exercise of we want to just build we want to start working with numbers and printing out numbers and maybe building a number pyramid so all right uh, just a mental exercise so all right so we're going to work with a for loop and a for loop literally starts with the word for for is a keyword so um, and we're just going to use uh, real simple var simple variables that's the way I learned it let's not get over complicated so I in range let's just let's just get started so all right now let's let's review for a second right here we're using we're going to run our script in shell now uh, go back and look at uh, I think it's functions in script and I go through how to open up the um, the script file, a new file to run in shell. So all right, uh, just a quick review. You run this. You got your cursor has to be over here, and you can either go down, click run, go down to run module, and it had a hotkey of F5. So as long as your cursor is over on this side, we hit F5. It's going to ask you the prompt. It's going to run. So all right. Now we're going to kind of build on our uh, experiences here. So. Let's leave these all so we can just kind of build so you can see them and they as they progress. Oops. Let's see if I got all this deleted. Okay. So all right. And I'll remind you and I'll show you how to um, comment things out. So all right. And it's you highlight the region and it's Alt 3. And the reason why commenting this out so we're going to go down and we're going to just have these here and you're going to be able to look at them and see the changes now there are all kinds of extra things that we can do with print and we're going to begin to use one of them of the end item okay so I comma end equals so, all right the way you read this is this is basically a way to keep everything on one line because remember as we go through a for loop it's going to follow all these instructions and go through so this first time it printed each item on a brand new line now what this does is it captures it and it says hey I have these rules here for end and I don't want any spaces so now let's look and see what this does so this puts everything on one line so alright let's say let's copy this and just keep going alright put a little space there and comment out all three run it again so now we're adding spaces <coughs> excuse me okay now now let's now let's work on something a little more sophisticated so all right so let's comment this out okay I don't know why I didn't copy this so all right now since we're going to use a different for loop, this is a nested for loop for J in range. Now watch what I'm going to do here, and we'll go through this. Okay, so let's go over this. So the first time we go through I, it is what zero. So this is a way. Well, here I will just run this and see what it's going to do. Alright, so look, 0, 
0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3. So what this, what this did was Python ran the first time through this for loop i is 0 because it's our first starting point was 0 and its grouping, its range is 0 through 4 that's 5 items 1, 2, 3, 4 over here excuse me, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's 5 and we came to that by this 5 now so and also as we're doing this I want you to pause these videos and practice these yourself so alright so now with this nested loop what I'm saying is for the variable j in this grouping so this is going to go through this main loop five times now what the kicker is is that this is going to go through this loop multiple multiple times so it's going to go it's going to jump down to this five times but it's going to jump down to this every single time this printed out because each time this goes through so it hit this print statement 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so because the first time it went through I was 0 right so then the only time the first time J goes through this grouping it's 0 and the next time it goes through this I is 1 so then 0 1 then the next time it goes through here this is 2 0 1 2 then the next time 0 1 2 3 boom and that's how that is so now let's copy this don't know if I copied that went too quickly okay so now let's kinda wrap our head around what I'm doing here let's change this a little bit so alright that just put everything in a row because it says each time you get to the end of the line don't go to a new line stay on this line well that's not really helping us what it's doing so this is where I was saying alright let's go over this real slow I want you to watch so I'm gonna hit I'm going to hit enter one time. It goes down and it automatically indents. Now I'm going to backspace just one time. It's going to jump back here. So once it gets done doing this sequence each time in this loop right here, it's going to then jump down to this. Let's just, picture's worth a thousand words. Let's just look at it and then we'll go over it. So, all right. So, the way that you read this is this is probably easier to see so the first time through I is 0 right because it starts at 0 goes up to but not including 5 and we have 1 2 3 4 well there's actually nothing here so you, you see the space in between so 0 1 2 3 4 so why don't we change this just a little bit we can build. Now if it has two numbers, what does that mean? The first one's the starting point. Then the if there's two, it's starting and stopping, which is exclusive, not including. Okay. So what did I do? So I changed this just a touch because the reason why nothing was happening here is because because it didn't have anything to take in there were zero arguments so I had to change this to one to get my zero to come out so I changed that so now what happens if I wanted one to, well actually let's not do that that's going to be too complicated for two for a nested loop. Now, 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 let's look at this. So, actually, let's leave that. Let's do another. Let's copy this yet again. 
so we can see it. All right. So if I backspace this, so indentation is very important. So if I run this, this is going to come out. So watch. Click back over here, F5. Oops. No, it got rid of, uh, because this print is just an empty line. And actually, the next video we're going to do, um, we're actually going to work on this and explain more uh, in depth of what just an empty print line is. It's just a new line. It's just the same as a new line. So when we do this, it undoes all of this. But when we have it sitting here, it says go through this, print everything through this loop on one line. That's, that's basically what this means. Print everything on one line. And then when you get done, come down here. But we still have that command where it's saying ignore the new line, ignore the new line, ignore the new, new line. So we've got to add, we've got to add a new line. So when we run this, that's why this happens. So, all right, I know next time we're going to work on building a function and then calling that function with a new function. It's a really great uh, task. So, hope you guys are getting something out of this. Thanks for watching. See you next time.